What's up, guys and gals? It's Eric, uh, host of the Devi Dose, back with the second half of Eric Gray's rookie profile. And I'll try to come back and do a little bit more film work after this. But I want to get at least one game out for everybody first. So, uh, so Gray, we did his data profile uh, a couple nights ago. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Let's look at some film. So, um, here's my impressions of Gray. Having watched three games at this point, um, one, I think you watch these games. It's pretty pretty evident that uh, Oklahoma's line generally is dominant. They're doing a great job uh, run blocking uh, most of the time, but that's not to take anything away from Gray. You see on plays like this, who he does have to create, or he does have to make reads, it's a great job. Very smart runner, very creative runner. He's got that spin move. You'll see that a lot. He's got a really nice dead leg move. Uh, he's got a nice jump cut in the hole. I don't think he's the most explosive athlete. I'd expect him to test somewhere in the middle for running back. You know, four fives. Uh, or he's going to jump crazy. I do think he's got a little more power than the smaller backs in this class. Uh, you know, and he's as fast as any of the big backs. And certainly more agile than most of the bigger backs. Not, I mean, Kendry, I think, has got the same level of agility. Um, you know, Charbonnet moves laterally well, but... I don't think Charbonnet is as smart in the open field as Gray is. Uh, what we're seeing from Gray is, is what I want Charbonnet to learn how to do. Uh, you know, the one dead leg and blow by a guy instead of dancing and, and trying to trying to shake him, right? Know your strengths. I think you see that out of Gray here. And, you know, and I really think you see some maturity from him. Uh, this is his fourth year. He's certainly a better back than he was earlier in his career. Uh, and I think, you know, you're, you see that in him getting more opportunities. Again, just look at this hole, like Oklahoma, just wide open. But then sets the back up, gets him to bite right, boom. You know, enough explosiveness, enough agility to get by. Um, so, I, you know, I, I don't think um, – he is the most explosive athlete, but I think he's good at working with what he has. Um, you know, again, very, very smart, um, efficient runner. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. You know, again, there's the spin move. It's a nice spin move. Um, you know, good reads behind the line of scrimmage. Um you know, it was a nice bit of patience there. He does that better than a lot of the guys. Still, though, I'd like to see, you know, like a Pepsi challenge, right? Like I tore Tank up pretty hard for his film, but let's see Tank Bigsby playing behind this Oklahoma line. How much of, you know, Tank's pressing and, uh, you know, poor decision-making comes from him being under duress the time he touches the ball, uh, having no holes, having to create on his own, um, you know, um, whereas, you know, I think Gray feels able to be patient. Um, he can wait for holes because they pop up. Um, this game, he doesn't really get a lot of catches, but, um, you know, real, real smooth um, in the receiving game. Good hands, good transition to runner, uh, extends uh, towards the ball, can pluck the ball away from his body. Um you know, a lot of nice traits as a receiver, um, you know, and, and a decent inside runner, um, mostly gap at uh, Oklahoma. I don't click his own play, but lots of gap plays. You see him run. Um, yeah, you know, I'm just seeing a lot of things. I wish, you know, he didn't get missed on some of these passes that he would have been a nice check down. You know, again, just doesn't do anything super flashy there, but certainly extends the run, 
just with smart moves in the open field, uh, you know, somewhat explosive, uh, certainly fast enough. Um, you know, a couple of nice dead legs there. But it does have, you know, the capacity to, you know, add yards, create yards. Um, yeah, I think that's that's where I'm at on Gray, right? I think he's a really good runner. I think he's certainly better than Kennedy Brooks, um, who was his predecessor in this offense. Just more d- dynamic. You know, Brooks was always a little tight in the hips, a little stiff. And uh, Gray certainly isn't that. Uh, he's, he's got wiggle, as they say. Um, and I think he's faster than Brooks, too. Again, Brooks ran like a 4.6 or something. Um, you know, I don't think Gray is going to run a 4.4, four, but I expect him to run mid 4.5s. Uh, so, yeah, what's the prognosis? Uh, I mean, I think he gets drafted. I, I don't think he's a day two guy. Maybe tail end, you know, late round three, but uh, I think that's my expectation for him. Uh, I do think there's more value in running backs in the third round this year than there has been in the past. But still, you know, I'm not going to overdraft them uh, in my rookie drafts. Um, but, you know, for guys that I might be able to get in the third round, I mean, that's where Gray's going to go. Sure, you know, he, he's going to get a role, um, you know, and if he slides into some seasons where he's, he's the primary pass catcher out of the backfield and sharing some early down work, he could be useful, a useful fantasy football asset. But, you know, when I say that, I mean like Khalil Herbert, you know, I, I don't mean a uh, top 12 fantasy back, although, you know, uh, who's to say he can't have top 12 weeks if he grabs a lead role, scores a touchdown, catches a couple of passes. Uh, that's the sort of thing we should be expecting from, you know, this fourth tier running back. Uh so uh, please like, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if there's things you'd like to see on here. Who else do you want to see profiles on? And have a good night.